We've developed a lot of expertise over the years in uh, making measurements from uh, aircraft. We've been doing this for almost uh, almost 35 years now, and we've used uh, aircraft in, uh, in virtually all of the studies that uh, uh, that we've conducted, uh, starting with the acid rain business where we flew airplanes and clouds, uh, in the oxidants business where uh, we have uh, flown the aircraft through plumes from major urban centers to try and understand what's going on. And now uh, we're again using aircraft to uh, look at aerosols in the atmosphere uh, under conditions where the sky is clear. Uh, we are also using uh, aircraft to probe the properties of clouds and the influence that aerosols have on those clouds. That interaction is as follows. Each cloud droplet in a cloud uh, is formed on a single aerosol particle. So the number of droplets that a cloud has depends on how many particles got activated to form cloud droplets. And then in turn, the number of cloud droplets in their size determines how much radiation uh, that, that cloud will reflect back into space. And it also has a lot to do with whether that cloud precipitates or not. And, and that, in turn, has a lot to do with the lifetime of the cloud and its, its uh, climatological effect on, on the atmosphere. So uh, this very complex thing, and we have to uh, understand uh, a, a number of processes and properties of uh, particles in the atmosphere. The study in Chile is focusing on uh, the, an, an area of clouds that's the largest area on the globe of low-level stratus clouds, and it has a tremendous uh, climatological uh, impact on the Earth. If it weren't there, then the Earth would be considerably warmer than it is. Um, that cloud deck is not uh, predicted well by models. These uh, general circulation models or climate models that are used to predict uh, global temperature change have a great deal of difficulty in predicting the existence of this region of clouds, which extends for hundreds of miles and is probably present in that area 90% of the time. So the objective of this study is to go down there and try to try and understand uh, why that cloud forms, why that region of clouds forms, and what determines its properties. That, and, and the property that is of most interest to us is uh, why, what determines how much radiation that layer of clouds reflects back into a space. What determines that? And um, we were also interested in that study because this cloud region is so large and so persistent. We're trying to understand uh, why certain regions of that cloud start to precipitate and then dissipate and certain other regions don't. We have developed some theories here at Brookhaven about how, wh why that occurs and we want to use this experiment as an opportunity to uh, uh, examine those theories and perhaps to, to, to validate uh, our uh, physical understanding of the processes that we think are important. Uh, we're collaborating with the National Science Foundation, uh, who has funded a number of university scientists and will be deploying their uh, C-130 aircraft. We're um, collaborating with uh, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who is going to bring their research vessel, the Ron Brown, uh, to the experiment. Uh, we have uh, foreign participants. The uh, British Meteorological Office is sending two aircraft and about 25 scientists to participate in the program. The Chilean government is providing um, uh, a, a ship and is uh, setting up a ground site and is assisting us in numerous other ways uh, to make the program a success. Um, and this is kind of the way that uh, we do business and have successful programs.